Okay, in this video we will cover everything about how to price your artwork. What's the best way to price it? And we will cover it from beginner's point of view all the way to advanced, real deep psychological principles that you will be able to use in every part of your life. My name is Tris Ketels and I'm an artist myself and I hope that we will be uh, giving some real value here. So let's dive in. What's the first level of pricing your art? If you're really a beginner artist, what's the first level? And also, sadly enough, the least interesting one, but very powerful and very easy for you to use all the way in the beginning when you're thinking about selling your art in like the last couple of months, you know, like you're all the way in the beginning. The best way to do it then, the best way to price your art is probably taking the following mathematical equation. The amount of hours you worked multiplied by the hourly rate and then you add your material costs to that. So let's say you've worked 50 hours on a particular piece, you charge 20 euros an hour and the framing and the material cost, everything is 150 euro. Then you have 50, 20 euro an hour, like 1000 euro plus 150, you have 1150 euro. Okay, and if you're gonna sell it in a, in a gallery, it's gonna be 50% commission, so you double that. That's 2,300 euro right there, and you will get 1,150 euro from that. So that's a basic principle that you can use, a basic equation. But that's a very boring one because the art world, of course, is not calculated in hourly rates and the price is not determined by how long an artist worked on that particular piece. It's just not. And so in the second level of pricing your artworks, you're going to want to think about what influences the price of an artwork. This is for a little bit more advanced artists who, are, who have a career that's already going for a couple of years. And so you want to understand in that level, in that space, what influences your artwork, uh, the price or the value of your artwork. And so which exhibitions you will have or you, you got in the past will determine the value of your artwork. Um, the printed or anything like, like printed written things about your art will determine the value of your artwork. Magazines, catalogs and who wrote about your art will also have an impact there. Not all people, not all critics, not all journalists are created equal. Some are more equal than others. And also now in nowadays the internet world, online, online publications also matter in that space. And so you, will, you want to take that into account of your pricing. Um, which collectors have your work? Very, very crucially important. Um, which collections, not only collectors, but in which collections is your work currently hanging or currently stored? Very important. Which museums, etc., etc., etc. Also, like, like in those written publications, having a front cover is going to be way more important than having an article somewhere in the mid middle of the magazine. Of course, famous people that have pictures with your art in their homes or anything like that will lift the value of your art up. Awards that you've won um, um, or just select, being selected by a panel member in a jury is already going to lift your prices up. And so, so in a particular series of art that you have, some artworks are going to be way more expensive than others even though you put the same amount of time in and the same amount of size some of my art that got that, that won prices is way more expensive than other art that is the sim same quality same size same everything and so you want to take those things into account um and so um i missed some stuff like i missed a lot of stuff here but anyway when you're doing that the psychological principle that you have to take into account, and this is probably the most important part of this, is the contrast principle. And so let me explain that very briefly here, very short. Uh, very short. Um, let's say you have three pools of water. One on your right, one on your left, one in the middle. Yeah, The right one is super cold water. Let's say it's five degrees. The left one is pretty hot water. Let's say it's 40 degrees. And the one in the middle is 25 degrees. Now, put your both hands in uh, the right bucket and the left bucket. 
let him sit there for let's say two minutes or something and then what you're going to do is you're going to take your hands and put them in the same bucket of water what's going to happen and this is the contrast principle and this is so important in the middle section in that second level of pricing your artwork what's going to happen is that your right hand will feel warm and hot and your left hand will feel cold even though they're in the same pool of water at the same time that is the contrast principle it feels hot in your right hand because it comes from very cold water. That contrast principle is insanely important because what you're going to do in that second level of pricing your artwork is you're going to compare your art with similar artists. And so in that comparison, you have to understand that contrast principle that is being used in the art world because otherwise you will probably price your art way too high. Let me give you an example. Um, you go to a gallery and there's an artist there that has similar artworks, a similar track record um, and, and similar prices. Just everything is similar to you. Yes. They have small pieces hanging on the wall and the small pieces cost 2,000 to 3,000 euro. And they also have bigger pieces and the bigger pieces cost, let's say, 10,000 euro. Now, there's a good chance that those bigger pieces are not being sold. There's a good chance that the gallery decided to hang them there and push those prices up. Why? Because they want to use that contrast principle. And so the bigger prices are hanging there to make sure that the smaller pieces look cheaper and will be bought more. And so you have to compare not to what you see as the asking price, but what you see as the selling price. And so you will have to ask when you make that comparison and determine uh, the value of your art, um, you will have to ask galleries for the track records of those artists so that you can see what actually sells. Those 10,000 euro pieces might never sell. And so if you don't do that, you might price yours at 10,000 euro, which is gonna be a strange and kind of a problem and, 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 and you don't want to do that. So you have to compare with the selling price and be aware of that contrast principle that is taking place there. Very, very important. Now, I could go into what influences the value of your art even more and even further. And we could take all those small things that I just said and, and make a whole new video out of them. We're not going to do that for the sake of this video because I want to also share with you the third level of pricing your art. And then we go in the realm of real deep psychology of the, the, the pricing psychology. Because from my perspective, way too many artists, including myself all the way back in the beginning, are worrying about pricing their art. And they think it's really important. They think it's a crucial aspect. And so what you will see in the art world is that there, are, that there are actually companies who only give professional advice on pricing your art and build a whole business out of that. And so it seems as if it's a very important thing. But the reality, if you understand, the pricing game in sales is that it might not be as important as everybody thinks it is. So let's dive into the... the why people buy stuff. Let's dive into the why people buy stuff because this is crucial. If you understand why the pricing game is important in influencing a particular sales transaction, you will understand that that type of psychology actually does not take place in the art world. And what is the pricing game? It is literally people who decide to buy this particular product because it is cheaper here than in another company. The pricing game in the world is a game where companies lower the prices to have a competitive market advantage over other companies. And so where do you see this pricing game? You see this in viral marketing. You see this, for example, in Walmart. Walmart. People go there because it is cheaper um, than in other local supermarkets. That's why they go there. You see this on Amazon. Why do people buy books on Amazon? Because the books are so much cheaper than with a local bookstore. And so they won the pricing game. Because it's a game where stuff is cheap and people want to have that stuff even cheaper. Now in the art world, and this is so crucial, 
we don't play this pricing game. We don't play this pricing game. And so in the art world, it gets a completely different connotation. Now, there are parts of the art world where we kind of play this pricing game. Let me give you an example. Um, for example, if an art dealer, an upcoming art dealer who deals in, I don't know, 20th century art or something, um, he might play this pricing game for the following reason. Um, he finds artworks that are completely underpriced and then let's say he finds an artwork that's that, that he can buy for 5,000 5, euro. He knows the price of that artwork is 30,000 euro and he sells it short. He sells it at 20,000 euro which is 10,000 euro less than he could, could get. Now the reason why he does that is because he wants his upcoming, his beginning, he wants to build that collector's base out and he wants to build that that relationship with those collectors by adding value. Hey, I found this. I did all the work to find this cheap, uh, underpriced piece. And I can sell it to you because it's good for your collection. You want this and you can, you, you, you can have a profit on the, on, this, on the buying process itself. And so by providing that value, you build that relationship out and then you can leverage that relationship later on in the game. Now, for artists, it's crucial to understand here that, number one, the price already exists. It already exists. This particular piece is worth 30,000 euro. For your career, the price might not really already exist. You're inventing a price there. It's, it's a convention. And so you can compare to other artists and see that that is the price that already exists. But it, it's, it's a different feel there. When, 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 when your price doesn't already exist with shitloads of track records, etc., um, you cannot really play this price game because there's no comparison to, to what it is worth. And so, so that is, that's a game that you don't play. These, these dealers play it, but we cannot play that game. Perhaps in the higher end, of course, you can play that game, but we're not talking about that in this video. Um, and so, so understanding that pricing your art is not about pricing is crucial. Understanding that collectors don't buy because of a price, because the fact that your art is cheaper than an other artist is going to be crucial because with that understanding you can detach yourself from that whole pricing thing which is not really that important at all. The truth is that People don't buy or bought all the way in the beginning Damien Hurst his work because it was priced properly. Okay, that's not the reason why they bought that. And so, so understanding the why people buy stuff is crucial so that you can put your focus on the things that actually matter. Pricing your art just simply is not one of the priorities in the art game. And so you should detach yourself from that with this. And... Um, a good way for me to understand that all the way in the beginning was um, was actually through the framing, perhaps, of, of Gary Vaynerchuk. Um, when he talked about, about naming your company. You know, a lot of people, a lot of artists think about pricing their art. They're also, they also think about what, what the name of their website should be, or the name of their Instagram page, or the name of their whatever. Those things don't matter. Those things don't matter. Google, the word Google didn't meant anything before Google. They created the value of that word. They created the, the connotations that we have with that word. Not by creating the word itself, you know? Like, um, would Andy Warhol have sold less paintings or less, less artworks when he, when he would have used his original name? which is Warhola, his bird name is Warhola. If he wouldn't have changed that, it would have been the same, you know? Like he would have been equally famous. The name doesn't matter there. The price is the same thing, you know? Pricing is not gonna result in selling your art. It's just not. People don't buy, in the art world, they don't buy based on price. With Amazon and Walmart, they do. So, do, so you have to, Stop worrying so much about pricing your art. It's just not that important. Understand 
what influences the value so you can explain your price but not necessarily determine your price that's going to be the attitude that you need and um, with that i hope this helped a lot um, i have another video on why people buy stuff so you can understand that completely and then know which aspects of the art are actual psychological reasons for buying it so you can focus on those instead of pricing your art uh, definitely check definitely check that out and for the rest um i would say subscribe if you want to more to have more business stuff about the arts and all of that stuff and lift your career up and um see you later ciao 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 ciao